All right, we're doing some more porting on these heads. Uh, customer wanted a, a better job. So I knocked the guides out so I can port deep in there where the guides are at normally. So I was able to get in there. So that one there is what we did before. This one here we did there, did a lot more work on it. Did a lot more cutting up around the valve guide boss here. Clean that all out. Open the bowl up more. Basically just open everything all up. So exhaust, a lot more work done on that side. Before we just kind of deburred stuff and left it. This one here we did open up the port quite a bit through here. Did it more round. Obviously not very round. Eyeball. So open this up straight through all the way down. Got a nice consistent diameter all the way down through there. Opened up through here pretty good, so you got a good flow path. And uh, basically just made it a lot straighter and more consistent on size instead of pinching it down here at the end. So that's what that one looks like. Definitely a lot of work all through the bowl area. So this one here, it's hard to see it, but you got a, like a high spot around through here that got cut out of this one. It got cut out, blended, radius in. This side over here, you can see the big pump right in there that got cut out on this one. Ah, who wants me now? We'll be back. All right, we're back. All right, so anyway, the like so this area up through here got more cut out. You can see how things are more blended in, so more equalized, not so equal, unequal like they are on these ones. And you can see I opened this up quite a bit from what it was. So. You don't have to make it perfectly round, but just get it so it blends in real nice coming out of the pipes, all you really care about, and not pinch down at the end. So that was the exhaust. The intakes, the same thing, we cut away the wall through here a lot more through here. Blended this more through here. This is where it was real low. Actually, this is the side to work more on this side. This side here is the side that was undercut real bad, core shift. But I cut the wall back here, blended it all the way from here on back. We'll see from the other side, and then this deeper, this more on this side. Put a very slight radius on the back side of the seat, not very much because I still want that straight edge coming up. But on this side here, we cut a lot more out of here, obviously, went around the guide and made a nice radius coming around the back side here for flow. And basically just unshrouded everything even further. You can see how this thing really humps in right through here. That got all cut out on this one. So that's the stuff you cut out. It takes more time. You spend another couple hours or so more at least on the ports doing that. So more time, more money. Over here, we had the big hump in here, right through here. I got cut most all of that out. So now it's just a nice straight shot straight down. Then we blend, cut this out through here and blend it in the bowl. So it's a straight shot from here all the way out, as you can tell. It's also nice and round and it's nice and smooth. Not the surface finish, but the shape. There's a difference between the two things there. The exhaust, I mean, the exhaust of the port, you can see the same thing. It's nice and straight and true. You can see there's not a bunch of waviness in there. We ground out the high spot that was all through here. We had a big ledge like you went over like that. So we cut all that out. That's in here a little bit already. You can see how we initially cut it more, but you can see how it's still in there quite a bit. You see how it humps in real bad through here, so we'll cut that all out and blend it all the way up to the bowl way up over to here. This side here, it's undercut real bad, so basically you just taper it from this edge in a little bit, so you don't have the funnel where it's going that way and the port goes that way. Just make it so you can turn. Once it goes through the O-ring lip, it can turn and go in. This one had that same problem on this one. This was all low through here, so you can see how we blended it. So now it looks more e consistent and even. So this one here, you got this big hump right through here. That'll be all coming out through here. So it'll be a straight shot. Maybe like on this one over here. So anyway, that's how you do it all. So I'm not going to show you two more hours of that. So. Did a bunch of videos of porting already in the last couple weeks, so I don't need to repeat over and over and over. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We'll be back after we uh, finish up the other one. All right, got the other head done finally. Another couple more hours of work. Full day of reporting stuff. All right, so there's the what we had before. The one we just did, this is the one I just finished. So we got the same, same layout. 
knocked off all the heavy stuff. Open things up quite a bit more. There's this one here. There's this one. This one I made a little more rounder. This one here, I, know, I might get lazy and go back and hit that. Yeah, it's good enough. So I got these all stuck up in there pretty good. So the airflow comes in there real nice and cleanly. Just like it does on this side. There's your porting through there. So this is going to give her a maximum amount of port I'm going to get with the valve size we got. So on racing heads what I do, I make them even deeper. Basically just make the bowl bigger and deeper and open up the wall sideways a little bit. And you go in here and bore out this hole right here and make this whole thing just huge all the way through. That's what you do on a race bike. But street bike you don't do all that. All right, so these are uh, pretty well done for now. I'm gonna go beat the guides back in it. I'll put one over guides and exhaust. They came out pretty firmly, but I'll just go one over on those. So it'll be nice and tight. Don't worry about them coming out. And I guess tomorrow I'll finish to head doing the valve guides and honing them and all that. So it's been a whole day just doing heads again. All right, that's it for tonight. All right, I'm back. I forgot, uh, let me get some comments about what I use for doing my work around here in my cutters. So we use die grinders, quarter inch die grinders. I like front exhaust exit because it blows the crap that way away from me and keeps the port clean. I use the electric grinder here. It uh, just fills in all of the chips in here. And for some reason, it always kicks back in my damn face. I don't know why. It always throws stuff in my eyes. But uh, either way, I think a lot. These ones here, you rarely get anything in your eyes because it's always blowing it forward. So I like the front exit. Plus, it's a lot quieter. And you get oil and stuff coming out of here when you oil them because you're supposed to use air oil on them. Air to oil. So anyway. And then, so anyway, it's, it's always wet when you lube them. <clears throat> okay, these are... <clears throat> yeah, cast iron dust. These are just cheap ass grinders, you know, they're 15, 20, 30 bucks a piece, whatever they go for these days. So these are just cheap ones. You know how loose they are. The bearings get worn out on them. This is Ingerson Rand. This is a 200 something dollar grinder. You can see they get loose too. Just not as bad. This one here is a CP, I think is what this one was. Couple of them, there's more of them over there, so got lots of different ones. So, anyway, they all take a dump about the same. Okay, the small ones in here you can get obviously get inside of ports when you're doing, especially on the exhaust port. You're able to get in here pretty good, like this, to get down in here where you need to get right there. So, it goes inside the hole. These big ones, yeah, they don't fit, they don't work, you can't get in there all the way. See, these big electric things. They're even worse. You can't even see the damn tip. These are the worst. These are great for cars if you have big ass ports, but they're junk for you for anything important. So you can't beat a nice little small grinder. Plus, it, it's really maneuverable, moves around. I take all the safeties off. I bend them down to fit flat so you can actually stick the whole damn thing inside of a port like that and work, which I have done. So, you know, you'd be surprised what you get, how far you can stuff when he's into a port. So I do that, so that's just a matter of keeping these things flat. All of them have done that way, and there's some ran, I don't care who makes it. You take all that safety crap off so I can work on it. So that's how you do all that. Uh, these are the big long ones here, obviously. These are, I think, eight inches. The problem with these is they break. These things will go in there and start going in an orbit like that, and they break. Or you grind them and you start going sideways like that and you, you put a big gouge in your head up there where you don't want it because you didn't know it was hitting on the back here. Plus it wears the grinds out more because there's more leverage on the bit. Harder on the bearings. So these I don't use very often. Plus they're pretty damn expensive. Everything I use is carbide. Carbide works. The high speed steel stuff with a bunch of these old ones back in here. These are steel ones. I never use them because they don't live. They'll work with uh, aluminum but they don't live with iron. They wear out too quickly. Uh, they make single cut and double cut. This is a single cut bit. It's a double cut bit. See, double cut's got a secondary cut on it. That helps cut a little better. Makes it a little bit more aggressive. So that helps you. These are for doing uh, steels. 
and these ones over here for doing aluminum. Of course, ones like that. Everything I use is burrs. I don't use anything else. You get a nice smooth finish. That's what you want for finish. You don't need anything coarser or smoother than that. It's perfect. That's all you need. I use the dull ones here for uh, doing my final. So they don't really cut anything per se. They're just going to smooth off some high spots, and that's about it. So the, all the pouring I did today, I used this one here for roughing out because that has a nice new bit in it. That's for doing the heavy hogging back in here. And a little bit on the intake here, but not inside the port. I only go in there about that deep with it. But everything else, I use these ones here. This is one of the newer ones I got. This is a modified one. I don't know who made it, just one I picked up. It works really good inside the bowl. So when the valve guide is not in here, you can go in here and put a nice shape to your bowl here pretty easy. So it makes a nice bowl. This is very aggressive. You barely touch it, it cuts. So you gotta be very careful. So these single, these double cuts when they're new are very aggressive. So you gotta be careful. So these things are even more aggressive. But if you use these on steel, it just breaks them up. All right, uh, this here is a, these are all similar shapes. This is a half inch, five eighths, three quarter. The more the bigger they are, the more they cost. <clears throat> when you use the little small ones, like a three eighths here, or this size, these ones are pretty cheap to get. The problem is these are hard to get a good finish on because they like to make dimples and everything. <clears throat> you need the bigger diameter to get a better finish. As you can tell, this is the most popular shape around here, but this is my final shape here. <clears throat> this here is, uh, you can't see it, but this port actually has a shape like this. So this here, when you cut in here, it'll dig in. See how it digs in right there? Now this I took and I ground out my diamond wheel. I, I ground the back side away so it wouldn't cut. <clears throat> this one over here it has not been cut. See, it's a sharp edge. So when you back up, it puts a big gouge on the back side. When you back up with this one, it just doesn't cut because it's dull. It doesn't dig in. So it protects your, it saves your port from being screwed up. That one will screw up stuff real bad. You gotta be careful. These ones here, they don't have that edge in there because they're, they come back on itself. So reverse angle comes back. Not big of them. When you got one that is kind of real sharp in there, you hit it with a grinder. This one here has been on the grinder. I go back in there and grind the back side a little bit, chop the sharp edge. Doesn't hurt. So basically, uh, these small ones work on the exhaust ports, the bigger ones work on the intake ports because they're bigger. <clears throat> you have the valve guide in here, you're back using the half inch ones, and you also use the 3 8 ones over here to get down there deep right up next to the guide. So use both. On this stuff here without the guides in here, I was able to use this stuff right here, what I used today. <clears throat> I used this one here, electric, and then I used all of these different ones. These big long ones you use on the exhaust for getting way down deep in here. So you can get in here, cut this angle like right through here real nice. You can also blend into your bowl over here. And it's hard to do that when you're coming in from the top angle, like this because this edge here doesn't like cutting very well. This big long flat edge likes to cut very well. So this is, uh, doesn't work too good. Plus this will put a dimple in it. This one has a large flat area, so it'll actually smooth up the port. It'll make it nice and flat through here and straight. So that's what you're doing. So this one here works good on like these exhausts because they're really long and hard to get into. I don't use them on the intake, I don't need it. The intake, I can stick this whole damn thing in there and get what I need. See, real easy. No problem. So you pretty much only use this on the exhaust ports or other specialty stuff. So that's how that works. The, um, like I said, this one only works if you have a, a guide out of the way and you get in there and do it. Got to be very careful with that. These are the go-to ones that I usually normally use. Like I said, this is a pear shape. This is a radius tree. That's what I like. This one is a single cut, very dull. You see how shiny the flutes are on there, the cutting edge? That's dull. That's perfect for finishing. I have lots of other shapes and sizes over here. When I need them, I go in here and use them. There's all kinds of weird shapes and stuff you got. This is a tree shape. 
just a radius tree. See how different? It's got this, just has a point, just has a radius on it. it. Kind of explains it pretty easy when you're buying this stuff. Here's a bunch of longer bits that I rarely use, but they're here if I need them. There's all kinds of different more angles and sizes. These straight ones I don't use very often at all because there's no use for this inside of a port. That puts a big gouge in everything and I don't cut straight stuff. This gouge is on the back side. This is made for cutting metal off. You, know, you want to face off your top here like this and stuff like that. That's what these are for. Even that doesn't work very good for that. But People think they need them so they buy them. These little ball things come in handy. Here, this is a, um, <clears throat> this is a pair, it's not a ball. This one here is a ball right here. See, ball is a ball, pair is a pair shape. This one here is a little dinky quarter incher, that's a bigger one, big brother, see. So, you have to look at what you're trying to do and what you're looking for. These are very aggressive, they put dimples in everything. Very, very aggressive cuttings. You gotta be very careful when you use those. Like I said, the radius ones are what you want. You know, <clears throat> those are what you get used the most. Uh, grinding does not work. Very slow. Doesn't cut hardly anything. Stupid shapes. It's just about worthless. They break off real quick. They, they just don't do anything. They're just junk. You know, they're good for doing a uh, holes and steel or something we don't really care about much but or if you need to make a special shape or something like that they're good for that but they're not very good for doing porting and everybody likes using them because they're cheap so these are what we use so that's kind of uh, the part you use to do all this stuff like I said I like having lots of grinders because when I'm working I just change out the whole assembly it takes a lot of time to unscrew a damn bit off and on all the time I go back and forth probably Doing one head, I probably go back and forth a couple hundred times at least. I don't even keep, you know, I don't even keep track. It just, I'm, I'm always going back and forth, back and forth to different grinders. You know, different shapes, different this, different that. You know, whatever it takes, you just grab them. Like I said, here's one I don't use. That's for boring holes out or something. So, like I said, these are the most common shapes that you get. Now, if you go on eBay, you can buy little kits like this where they give you a, an assortment of sizes and styles, but. I pretty much just buy the ones I want. I always got new ones floating around. Here's a, here's the numbers you can order. That's a double cut. SE7 is the uh, style and size of the burr. So this one here is probably this shape here. Yep. Nope, that's a different shape. This is one I use for getting the holes in here like that. A three quarter carbide three quarter burr like that probably these are probably fifty dollars to a hundred dollars a piece depending on the burr. So these you don't buy very often. Three quarters cost a lot. Five eighths are very expensive. Half inch isn't too pricey. Three eighths are cheap, but who wants those? So here's stuff you buy that's been resharpened. You buy these at swap meets and eBay and a bunch of other places. Make sure they're carbide. Carbide's heavy. This is heavy. Steels are real light. If you got, if you put them both in your hand, you can tell the difference. Uh, you got to watch out for uh, metric ones. There's a lot of metric ones out there. It's five sixteenths. I mean, it's quarter inch, so I'm not sure if that equates to a metric. Probably six millimeters, some stupid size. You can use a metric. Uh, uh, Burr in your collet, in your quarter inch collet. You just have to tighten up another turn or so. The problem is it's not very concentric. I don't want to wobble around a little bit. <clears throat> so you get a very, uh, very bad cutting deal. That's the problem with these ones here. They wobble. They don't cut. They're not turning concentric. They wobble back and forth. So they only cut one spot. That's what causes things like this to break. They only hit one spot and they shatter. Yeah, and they still cut though when they're like this. That was brand new when I broke third time I used it. I've used it for another year and a half like this, broken. It still works. It's carbide, it'll cut. <clears throat> so, anyway, that's kind of how things go. So, make sure you use what you use and, uh, you know, just buy some stuff, play. That's all you can do. You can probably get set up for a hundred bucks pretty easy with your miscellaneous crap on eBay. 
you know, grinders are cheap. You buy three or four burrs, you know, just get the kind of ones I'm using like right here. You're good to go. Go play. Pay attention, cut slow. You should be alright. Alright, that's it.